She's an actress. She's a model. She is, hey listen, Lucifer. She played Lucifer, right? Who loves the Sandman? Okay. But she was also Captain Phasma in Star Wars. Where are my Star Wars people at, man? Come on. Listen, you may know her from Wednesday. Tim Burton. But you will know her as Brienne of Toth. for the one and only Gwendolyn Christie! Hello! Thank you for coming! Woo! Welcome, Gwendolyn. Hi. How are you doing? I am so well, and I have to say, it has been extraordinary to be here today. The energy is incredible, people have been so positive and kind, I'm really enjoying it. That's so nice to hear, I love that. Um, your energy is amazing too, we had a nice little convo backstage. And um, before we dive into your extensive career, uh, you were born in England. Can you tell us a little something about early life? so long ago. <laughs> it was so long ago. I mean, it was, I was always really passionate about film. From a really super early age, I loved film. I loved cinema. And I loved television as well. But for me, it was all about stories. And I, I was a, right. a really keen reader. And I loved reading. But I, I, I just loved performance, the idea of performance, yeah. the idea of becoming a character very fully. And, and very early on I, I looked at different actors and read as much as I could about different acting techniques and wow. styles. Um, from really early on I remember here reading about the method uh, with regards to Marlon Brando and Marilyn Monroe. Right. Right. And so that sparked my interest because what I was seeing in their performances was a kind of reality that reached out of the screen and took the viewer by wow. the hand. Wow, that's amazing. The way you worded that is beautiful. So, rumor has it that you started out as a model and kind of like got into acting by accident. However, you are a very trained stage actress. You have a lot of experience and you just told us you were reading about a lot of acting methods. So, can you enlighten us about what really went down and how you became an actress? That's so funny, you know, I didn't actually start uh, professionally modeling till I was 34. So, um, so I, you know, I did bits and pieces, but I, I was certainly never a model. I was always, you know, always told that I, I couldn't be, I couldn't be oh. one. Um, but that wasn't really a major problem because I, I wanted to be an actor because I wanted to have the experience of something close to some kind of soul connection. I knew from a really early age that I didn't know much, but I wanted to communicate something about what it is to be human. Could, could, could you verbalize what that something is? Or? I think just being human is such an incredible experience. So coming to an event like this is really fascinating to me because you meet so many different people. And it is, uh, for me, this feels like a safe space, and I think lots of other people have said that today too. And we're all here because we're united in our love for something, whether it's one of the shows, or a character, or, or an actor, or, or whatever it may be. We are united in that way, and it's a, it's a really positive experience. And we just think, um, what we can often lose sight of in our world is that we are all having a human experience. And actually, there is more to unite us than divide us if we just really look for the connections. I love that. Can we get a round of applause for that answer right there? It's true. It's true. Yeah. It's true. So, you, obviously you are a part of some of the biggest franchises around. Not only Game of Thrones, but also Star Wars. Is, yeah, is there something that attracts you to sci-fi or did that happen by chance? And do you yourself 
love to watch sci-fi or can you say something about that? Or? It's funny, it's not something I ever set out to do. I, I, I look for characters. Um, for me, um, Brienne of Tarth was fascinating because this was a fascinating woman. And the kind of woman I hadn't really seen on television before, you know? I, I felt like I hadn't seen a fighter, a woman who was a fighter, who wanted to be a knight because of what a knight means in terms of chivalry and, and dedication to a cause greater than oneself. Uh, but a woman with an intense and very alive vulnerability. So that character was just uh, captivating to me. And then the, I read the books, and the, I thought the books were brilliant. And for me, it's always a, a projects that go beyond. You know, I love genre, but I also, I particularly love those that go beyond. Um, Star Wars, I've loved since I was six years old. Oh, wow. Star Wars that just feels like home. It it's does. about home. It's about it's about being a misfit, going on a journey, good against evil, and ultimately whenever I see it, I feel I feel like I've come home. I, I totally love that as well. And your character, Captain Phasma, I wanted to say there's some some elusive power that you almost convey on screen. How do you prepare for a role like that? I love, I've just loved, I wanted to be in Star Wars no matter what. I love JJ's work, I love Super 8, I love everything Kathy Kennedy's done. I, I, and I'm obviously a huge fan of George Lucas. Because George somehow was, was able to see this world that was amazing visually, fascinating characters who were flawed and dynamic, full of action, but very charismatic, always, and, and funny. I love yeah. the funniness of it. Um, but somehow, he takes all of those elements, the great visual, the sci-fi, and he gives you something close to, what is it? Is it almost a spiritual experience? It is. It's sort of what it is, it's transcendent. But it doesn't dictate to you. It's about you. It's about connecting. And that's, that's what I think the force is. That's very well worded once again. And uh, Captain Phasma, I thought it was an amazing character. You guys like Captain Phasma? I love Captain Phasma. I really did because I just wanted to be in Star Wars, but when I was told what the character was that JJ wanted me to play, and I was shown, I was shown the costume, it just triggered my imagination in a way in which not many things had done. The idea of this woman being powerful, being malevolent, having real violence, and an all-encompassing focus to get whatever she wanted, a, a ruthlessness and, and a real violence about her personality, the absence of, of any kind of mothering instinct, well, you know, of traditionally what we know from female characters yeah. being nurturing, and the mystery, it just spoke to me. It was also to me about lifting out of gender stereotypes. That felt significant. The idea that there is more. Well, well, that's the thing. When I when I saw you on screen, you know that character has I said an elusive elusive power, but it's also a palpable sense of force, not the force, but just strength. Is that is that correct? Like yes, and that's what it it's, it's what it inspired in me, and it's what I felt was necessary. And I just feel with that character, there is more to say. It feels like there is more to say. And it feels like a kind of investigation, a journey that people want to go on to see what kind of woman that could be. And what was incredible about Captain Phasma was so many different kinds of people love the character. You know, kids love the character. Uh, men, women, however anyone wants to identify. Lots of people from all different demographics really connected to that character because there was there was just, there was something there. When you get those characters, it's kind of inimitable. Particularly when, 
when you, they don't necessarily have a colossal amount of screen time, but somehow they just capture you. Definitely true. And I had the 18-inch figure of Captain Phasma, but it got destroyed in a flood, so I don't have it. We've got to get you another one. Who get out one. there has an 18-inch figure <laughs> of Captain Phasma? Can you bring it to brain immediately, please? Thank you, Gwendolyn. There's got to be a vendor out there somewhere. Come on. Let me know. Let me wait, okay? Don't get applause of care for Gwendolyn. Okay, speaking of characters, we gotta dive into Rhiannon of Toth a bit. But yeah, Game of Thrones fans in the building! Um, so yeah, I personally feel there's a, a unique, elegant power about you in the way you portray that character and you convey a lot of different emotions and it's just like, I mean, it's that role was written for you almost. Do you sense the same thing or? Well, at the second I um, was told about the character, I remember I Googled the character, and this is in the early days of the internet. Um, but I, I saw, I read about the character, and it was like a lightning bolt. It was sort of like time stood still, and I thought, I remember right. drama school, they said, if you are very, very lucky, maybe one day, there'll be a character that comes along and you don't need to do any work. It's all there, it opens up to you. And that's how that character felt to me. It felt like a character I'd never seen on television before, but also I was being given the opportunity to say so much, to have such a large story. Yeah. And it spoke to me about feeling isolated from society, about feeling at that time like, as a woman that didn't necessarily conventionally have a place. You know, we, we, we live in a different world now and I'm really grateful for that. Things are changing, we have to keep encouraging them to change, for people to be open and inclusive of each other, you know? Make, make it a, a warm, warm and welcoming space. But, but then the you know, mainstream media was very narrow. And there was, it was all of the complexities, the challenge of the fighting, which I'd never done before, but having to face up to so many things about myself, my androgyny, my height, my strength, my own, you know, unconventionalness in terms of how I look, you know, the inconsistencies in my face and my body. And even now, you know, it's hard to admit to that shame, but we have to, go through that process as artists because very hopefully maybe just one person it will change their minds wonderful come on this is amazing i, I totally agree with you couldn't, couldn't agree more as artists actors musicians you run into so so many nonsense things and just prejudice and you change conventions by just who you are which is phenomenal i love that and I think for everybody out there, you just gotta really be yourself. It sounds basic and easy, but it's not. It's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to do, isn't it? And, um, it maybe it's just me. But, but did, did that role, you, you can almost say, okay, let me, let me state it this way. It's more than it just, than that it just clicked. It was like an organic way of finding a character, because you said like it was I, so... I, I worked very, very hard, you know, I, I um, before the audition I, I worked for months with a good friend of mine who's an extremely successful makeup artist now actually, but she was very physical and, and she said I'll train you and she trained me, uh, Isamaya French, she trained me and she got me doing all sorts of kind of nasty stuff outside. Um, so you got to get down on the floor and give me 50 press-ups now. And I'd be like, are you, are you for real? And she's like, do it, do it. Um, and I, I did kickboxing. I, I had long hair then, and I, I never wanted to cut my hair. You know, I, I, lo I love my hair, but I took my hair away. I always wore makeup. I never walked around without any makeup on. I took the makeup off. Uh, I dressed very, in a very androgynous way. I just wore, you know, just sportswear uh, that was very, very plain. And I looked at the way I walked. I started to change the way I walked. I changed my voice. 
I worked hard to change my breathing. I lost a lot of weight. I put it back on in muscle. I changed, I had a whole eating plan. I was lifting heavy wow. weights. It was a mass, it was for me, it was a massive transformation. I read all, uh, all the books as much as I could about Brienne of Tarth, and it was really about, I read about knights and chivalry and tried to connect to a feeling, like an essence of why someone would want to be chivalrous, why someone would want to dedicate their self in service of something greater than themselves. And I realized that it was a combination of deep pain about not being accepted and also overcoming one's ego, doing the best to overcome one's ego. And it was such an enriching experience and I loved the dumb people I worked with, I to see brilliant C.C. Smith, I loved I loved my fellow actors, I had such great actors to work with that taught me so much because I'd never done television before. That was the first sort of experience that I had. I remember when they said, okay, turn over, and I thought, what does that mean? What that means is, get ready, because we're about to start filming. <laughs> um, it, was, uh, it was just so enriching, and I felt so galvanized. It was a lot of hard work. I mean, it was hard. It, it, there was a lot, of, a lot of physical pain. I totally hear you. So even though the role felt great and organic, the work was very hard. It was really tough, you know, and also you could never stop working. Mm -hmm. but I never stopped working until we finished. And I, I can proudly say that. I, I kept working and, you know, the brilliant Nikolai Costa Waldo, who played Jamie Lannister, woo! He worked so you know, he worked really, really hard. And we worked hard to build that relationship so that we had a good foundation and, and he took care of me. You know, he was a real gentleman and really did his best to make sure that I was, I was looked after because I, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and we did so much work because it was important to us to try and make that relationship on screen come alive. And it was great to yeah. be able to do that and then go home, you know? Yes. To be able to put it all into that. Fulfill it. Yeah, really fulfill it. Amazing. Uh, Lucifer in the Sandman, Captain Phasma, Brienne of Tarth, is there, inquiring minds want to know, do you have a favorite role out of all these franchises, or is that hard to say? Um, I, think there's, I think there's three, and I think that there, one is Captain Phasma because it feels like there's still so much to say and it's a character that's made such an impact on the world and made a big impact on me in terms of having to examine my own darkness which is something I've been able to do with Lucifer as well but something about Captain Phasma, the, the, the challenge of a woman choosing the hardness of that exterior and the hardness of her of her profession it just feels like there's there's a lot more to say there. Brienne of Tarth will always be so close to my heart, and I will genuinely always be so grateful that that ever happened. Not only has it changed my life, but it changed me, and it allowed me to start to come to terms with many things about myself as an actor, my confidence, and what I was able to do, you know? Um, and it's given me a lot of opportunities. The one I, I, I really felt I have a lot of excitement around, it's something I love doing, was Larissa Weems in Wednesday. Wednesday. What was it like to work with Tim? It was, you know, really phenomenal. Because I've done Tim's work since I was really glad that maybe, I thought maybe I was six, maybe I was eight, I'm not sure, but I watched Pee Wee, so that was the first thing that made such an impact on me, and then I watched every single thing that he did. I got to the cinema to see it for the first time, and he was someone that, uh, I remember watching those films and thinking, I'm not alone. But it's possible to feel the way I do, which is so outside, because other, other people do too. 
and maybe there is a home for me. And also, you know, I'm a bit of a, possibly a bit of a secret goth, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> Don't but go the, public with that but the, but the aesthetic, Thanks you know, sure. the way that there's this sumptuous fantasy world, and he's a master craftsman. You, you, have, a, you have a favorite Tim Burton film? Or? I really, I love Sleepy Hollow. Yeah. <laughs> Sleepy Hollow. I love Sleepy Hollow. The Corpse Bride. Was oh, I love no. Corpse Bride. I obviously love Beetlejuice. Yeah. And I think we might be getting a Beetlejuice too. Hey, you heard it first. I really loved Batman. I thought, I remember when that came out, and I thought, I was young, and I thought, what is this? Because, you know, with these super mo mo uh, superhero movies then have been kind of dumbed down a bit, but we got something that was luscious, very dark, and inspiring, but also those incredible performances, like Jack Nicholson. I mean, it was, oh, it was yeah. really off the chain. I, I adored it. Um, so, in short, I said, but, but I, the one I really, really love uh, is Edward, because it's just so human, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, it's a classic. Yeah, it goes, classic. it's also, there's always an elegance about the filmmaking and a, a, a masterful handling of of the direction of the oh, yeah. filming that is it's legendary it's it's yeah. it's innately iconic and i know that's an overused word but no but actually, he really is just the way the use of color the cinematography everything and he's endlessly inspiring i i do have to say tim gave me a huge amount of confidence and from working with him not only do i feel incredibly fortunate and grateful but I do feel excited to go forth and do so many other things. And that's the confidence that he's given, he's given me, really. He's helped to give me. Great. Thanks. Thank you so much. So I think, yeah, give her a round of applause. Please do. Wednesday, if you don't know what that is, check it out with you all, dude. Uh, so I think we should move slowly but surely into the Q&A with the audience. So we, we got the microphone right there. Um, if anybody has a question for Gwendolyn, Christy, you can walk up to the mic right now. No selfies, no autographs, just wonderful questions. And if you can't speak English, I will help you translate them. If you can't speak clearly into the microphone. Okay, Esther, let's go. First one, hey. Hi, Gwen, nice to meet you. Hello. Um, first of all, you're a feminist icon and women love you. I was wondering, since you're quite famous and people are bound to recognize you on the streets, what is the strangest fan meeting encounter you've ever experienced? Oh, first question. Oh, um, to be really honest, there have been so many of them, genuinely, <laughs> so many of them that it's kind of hard to choose. Uh, but I do remember, um, I, was, I was at a, we were very lucky, we'd been, Game of Thrones had been nominated at the Emmys and we won, won Best Show, we were at a party. And um, I was talking to someone and, and someone was really tapping me on the shoulder. And I was in really in deep conversation. I, and I sort of, I, I quickly looked, I didn't know who it was. I carried on talking and then they kept, and I said, well, I thought, I thought who, and what, who is this? And I said, hi. And it was Matt Damon. Ah. <laughs> oh, oh, hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice story, right? Yeah, Great answer. Thank Thanks. Next question. Hi. Hi. So if you could choose a movie to play in, what would it be? Oh, just all the easy questions first. Um, I, if I could choose a movie to play in, um, very difficult. I think that I would really love, oh, it's really trying to get the brain going. I would, I would really, I'd love to work with, I'd love to work with Jane Campion again. I worked with Jane Campion before on Top of the Lake with the, the wonderful Elizabeth Moss and 
The Piano remains one of my favorite films of all time. It's such an extraordinary sensual experience. And when it came out, I was a teenager, and the idea of exploring female sensuality and sexuality in that way, and, and, a, and a, a, a feminine response, a feminine energy response to the world, which is still brutal, so has brutality, inconsistencies. I think I, Jane, I think I'd like to work with you again. I don't know if you'd consider it, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Al. Next, hi. Hi. Um, I'm here actually to say thank you because I loved you in Beyond of Talk. I saw a woman like you described I'd never seen before. I'm really, I don't know, it really touches my heart. So thank you for that. Thank you for encouraging my own journey and also into the soft side. And then I didn't know uh, who was playing Captain Fosma when the movie came out. And when I saw your beautiful face, I was like, yeah, I love you so much, thank you. And I hope they are going to do a series on Captain Plasma, so I'll be cheering that on. Thank you. All you have to do is everyone here just has to write a thousand letters each and send them to Lucasfilm. I think that's all that needs to happen. It's just one thousand letters each, folks. Different names, make them up, members of your family, whatever. And if that's what you want, send them in. Will do. And thank you so much for your kind words. I really honestly appreciate it and it means so much. Nice. Hi, hi. Next question. Oh, Larissa Weems yes. seems oh, to be well. here. Larissa Weems has arrived. <laughs> Yes, obviously, as you can see, I love uh, Louis Williams, I love all your characters. Uh, but I was wondering if in uh, Shooting Wednesday, if there were any scenes that got cut that you were sad about, that didn't make it? No scenes were cut! <laughs> Literally! Well, not, not, of, not of mine at all. Not of mine at all. Um, and Wednesday was such a joy to film uh, because of everyone involved, but obviously I, I have to mention the absolutely phenomenal Jenna Ortega. <laughs> Jen, I just want to take this moment to say, Jenna Ortega! <laughs> because she is an inspiration. She is an incredible actor. She is an incredible human being with such a tender heart and intelligent mind. And her dedication to that role was a pleasure to work with. We both work in quite a similar way. And we were very dedicated to making these characters come alive. And every single scene with her was a joy and neither of us knew where it was going to go. How it felt like that relationship could go around the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gordon, for that. Hi. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. I have a question of multiverse matter. Oh, goodness. If Brienne of Tarth, Captain Phasma, and Principal Weems would end up in one team together, who would be the leader among them three? <laughs> okay, so I think the leader of those three, well, very clearly, obviously, it's Principal Weems. So, Principal Weems would lead with very strong support from uh, Queen's Guard, Brienne of Tarth, and then Captain Phasm would just ruining everything, being a traitor, like setting traps, messing them up, lulling them into a full sense of security, and then betraying them, and maybe murder one of them. Gosh, I hope not. Thank you very much. Thank you. Original question too. <laughs> hey. Hello. Um, Hello. First of all, I want to thank you um, for Free and Star. Um, yeah, she inspired me a lot. And I Speak into the mic a bit oh, more. I'm sorry. I'm tall. <laughs> um, yeah, she's uh, one of my favorite characters and I um, still love it to this day. I'm rewatching Game of Thrones right now and I'm obsessed. But my question for you is, um, Brienne of Tarth, what is the thing you learned from her, from playing her, and you still think about today? I think with 
That's a really interesting question. Thank you. I'm also trying to come up with something kind of um, punchy, which I don't think I don't think that question can allow. But Brienne of Tarp was such a significant experience, and it forced me to recognise, as I said before, my own my own conflicted feelings about myself, my place in the world, and my place in the world as a woman. And what I, I don't think I'll ever be able to quite get my head around and believe is that when I started playing the part in that very first season, in season two, I assumed that no one would like the character. And I assumed that she would get pushed into the background because I felt like that's just the way life was. And then the fact that people love the character, all sorts of people, all ages, all different kinds of people, meant so much to me that it genuinely made me think that perhaps, perhaps anything is possible. Wow. Wow, well, thank you. <laughs> and unbelievable that you thought that people would like her. I don't get it. <laughs> thank you. Beautiful. Wonderful question, great answer. Yeah, it's great. Hey, Spider-Man in the building! And yeah. Spider-Man is here! <laughs> What's up? Nice to see you here, Brian. Uh, I want a very answer. I had a question. Would, would you maybe mind doing an impression of Brian of Tart, describing your time and your, how you enjoy the Netherlands? So, so you want you want three things? No, no, just an impression of how you enjoy the Netherlands. And as Brian of Tart. As Brian of Tart. And oh. Yeah, but is, is, do you have any other questions than that? <laughs> uh, actually, that's a matter of an impression. Well, I guess maybe just a formal question. Uh, uh, what is your favorite set design? Like, what is your favorite set to be on Game of Thrones? Oh, on Game of Thrones? Well, the, the, the sets on Game of Thrones were absolutely extraordinary. They, re they were so detailed, and often everything worked. There were real fires there, the animals. What was fabulous about that job was that we had such a great team on the set that so you would walk in and even if I wasn't in character, even if I was in my civilian clothes, I would walk in and I would just feel like I was in the world. And always, for me, Winterfell was so real. Because I remember being kind of let loose one day and walking into some of the rooms on the battlements and they're all real. They're all, they were all set up. Even when there's no filming, it's still all real? Often, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's left there. But it was, anyway. So, it might not be an immaculate set, but something about the glue and the temperature, the lighting, the attention to detail on the walls, it was truly extraordinary. Awesome, thank you so much. Thanks, Spidey. Next question, hi. Hi, I'm going to be very direct. Uh, what's your opinion on frogs? On frogs? Frogs. On frogs. Your opinion. I absolutely love frogs. Do you love frogs or do you hate yeah. frogs? I love them. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> that was an original question. Hi. Hi. Uh, my question is, in the series Wednesday, what was your favorite scene you have to film as Sirius and Weems? say genuinely any any uh, any scene <laughs> that I really did I loved my scenes when the Adams family were together you know because you had we have such incredible actors in that series of Louis Guzman and Catherine Zeta Jones and, and Emma Myers and they're just all the actors I I particularly enjoyed uh, Tommy Earl Jenkins, who played Mayor Walker. We had a real blast together, and he's a, a fantastic actor and, and a great human. And a truly kind man, you know? A truly kind man and a truly a, a, a wonderful, generous spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. 
to say thank you so much for helping me with my insecurity and giving me the confidence looking the way that well, we have a couple of things in common but yeah thanks um, my question is um, I loved you as Lucifer in Sandman it's a very imposing character but in a very subtle way how do you go about preparing for such a role um, it's it's always about the text you know it's always about the material. So for me, it became about being very familiar and building a relationship with the graphic novels. And I love Neil Gaiman's work. I really do. Uh, he's, he's such a, he's one of our modern day poets, I do think. And he creates a world that's really unique. You know, there's so many different aspects that we recognize all in one world and that's fascinating to us, you know. And at the time when Sandman first started, it must have been 20 years ago, so it was kind of radical to have all those different characters together. So it's just about reading and rereading the source material until I, until I feel I know it in some way. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hello, nice to meet you. Hello. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, if you were to start over your career, what would be the genre that you would start from? What genre would you start from? She, she would have to restart her career. Yeah. I, I, to be honest, I'd probably work in tech. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you. Hi. Hi, hi. I have to say that I loved you as we had of Thor. Which one uh, would you choose between Wally Baratheon, Jamie Lannister, and um, Tormund? Patrick Payne. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, considering your education in the method and uh, your wide variety of characters, um, are there certain character traits, emotions, or energies that you find difficult to portray, and how do you deal with that? Um, Question. I, um, I I was lucky enough to have a uh, to go to drama school and and receive a, a fantastic training. And what they taught us was that the method isn't one thing. It's just having a method. And we worked on so many different kinds of methods, from Stanislavski to Strasbourg to Meisner to so many different ways of expressing yourself physically. Um, I find it all hard, you know, I start and it always feels like an impossible task. But it's a, really about what excites you, finding what excites you. I've been really lucky to play fantastically dynamic characters, whether they are, you know, kick-ass or whether they're, you know, evil and malevolent or indifferent or ruthless and conflicted or misunderstood in some way. It's, um, it's always, it always feels impossible and it's pretty much always interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elle. Hi. Hi. Uh, well, you're really a role model for me. Thank you so much for that. And I was wondering who has been a role model for you, because you're such a strong female role model, and I love it. And being this tall from my 12th, it's so refreshing to see someone like you on TV. So thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, that is enormously kind. Um, what I will say is I, I really appreciate your words, but anything that you found has come from you and not from me. So that's your, that's what you've achieved. Um, I, I've got to mention her again because Jane Campion has always been such a huge inspiration as being a director who happens to be female that communicates her work in such a uh, in such a rich way at a time when there weren't really many female directors at all so she was always a, a big inspiration for me really truly but I, I absolutely adore the work of Isabelle Huppert I think she's incredible and can we just hear it for Harrison Ford what a major actor who can literally do anything and shows that, that careers can be limitless.
spotless as they deserve to be. Like we were saying, you know, creativity is limitless. There, there is actually no cut-off point. And I love seeing his work. I, I'm fortunate enough to have worked with him in a small way. And I can't wait to see what he does next. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, guys, we got like three to four minutes left, so short questions if you can. Hi. Um, first of all, I really love you, love you as uh, in, in Wednesday. But I was wondering, uh, a lot of fans yeah, and just people in general thought you would be great as Lady Dimitrescu in, or if they ever make a Resident Evil movie. Like, what do you think about that? Particularly when it's done well. Um, yeah, so maybe. Who knows? That's well, I'm going to need to get a games console and play this game. Um, so, along with the 18 inch figure of Phasma that we're hoping for for Brain, <laughs> if there's anyone giving away free games consoles and Resident Evil, here we're right up here on the stage. Three, one, three, three minutes. Three minutes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, we, we got time for two questions, two, maybe three, so let's go. Hi. What, what was the worst role you did? The worst role you did? <laughs> That's an original question, I like that. Uh, the one I play in real life. Great question, great answer, thanks. Hi, Hi. Uh, just like you, I've always been a Star Wars kid. So I love you as Captain Phasma, and I love you on Wednesday. And my question was, yeah, would you like a Dutch delicacy? Uh, what does that mean? This is, it's called Stroop Waffles. I'll, 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 I'll grab it, you probably, it's, called, it's, it's a sweet it's, cookie it's with caramel. It's popular here in the Netherlands. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, Al. The answer is, of course, Nate. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. There you go. Thanks. Okay, last question. Hi. Hi. Um, since I am the last, uh, do you have any kind of upcoming projects you could maybe tell us a little bit about? Um, well, I'm really excited that I am a part of my f one of my absolute favorite shows on television, which is Severance. Uh, and did anyone else like Severance? Show. I thought it was so, ex it was just so uh, intriguing and original and unlike anything else on television, but it had a certain amount of kind of references that we don't see very often, harking back to kind of different styles of, of, of television that we, we haven't seen for a long time, sort of peppered throughout it. Uh, I thought it was truly original, um, so I am delighted to be a part of that. And that is all I can say at the moment on that subject. Thank you. That's the last question. Before we wrap it up, if you if you want to do the honors, you want to hold the phone. We we'll do a little quick, a quick. We want to get everybody in here for a short little. Yeah, is that okay? Okay. Yes. Everybody, right now, I'm on stage with the one and only Gwendolyn. Lovely. Thank you so much. Okay, Brienne of Toth, Lucifer, she's in Wednesday, she's all over the place and a wonderful spirit. Make some noise one more time for my home.
So how are you guys doing? Who's eating any so?